the entire Western world has lived for 60 years on the assumption that all crimes were Nazi crimes, and it's very difficult to change it. Whether Europe will ever come to terms with this um, criminal part of its past is difficult to know. But mass killing is mass killing. Um, there should be no distinction between one side and the other. And yet there is. World War II left more than 27 million Soviet citizens dead. The Communist Party always tried to decrease that number. Why? Because only a fraction of them were killed by the Germans. You have to remember that uh, when the Red Army marched, behind the Red Army was a second army, the NKVD army, which had its own tanks, its own machine guns and so on, firing forward so that nobody could move back. Когда пришли наши, то специальные части снимали жетоны с наших солдат. Виктор Батурин, chairman of the Russian Military History Association, tells the shocking story of how, after major battles, special Soviet units raided battlefields and tore the dog tags off the dead Soviet soldiers to make them unidentifiable. No other country in the world has treated its war dead in this way. Due to the appalling policies of the Soviet authorities, more than a million Soviet citizens joined the Nazi side. They were turned against their own people. Those who refused were ruthlessly dealt with by the Nazi collaborators. The Great Patriotic War was drawing to the close. Stalin was at the height of his glory. He knew quite well that nobody would ever judge the vanquisher of Hitler. So, at the end of the war, he carried out some of his most horrible crimes. Stalin uh, exiled about a dozen of nations completely, part and parcel, young and old, uh, women and men, uh, even mem members of the Communist Party among them. They were all exiled to Central Asia, to Kazakhstan, Chechens, Ingush, Kalmyks, Karachayevs, uh, uh, Crimean Tartars, a dozen of nations completely wiped out. The Soviet deportations, although on a much bigger scale, were similar to um, deportations by the SS. The descriptions are just horrific. 60, 70 people in, in a closed cattle truck uh, with no sanitary pro provisions, just a hole in the floor, packed so tightly that they could they had to stand up, they couldn't sit down. And when the train stopped, they would unload hundreds of corpses of people who died on the way. And then, there were many trees, well, there were two scrivets, and Ragutian was a good scrape. Shows me the snakes were far up, but if you command a wilk, then to sarg be no one. Then whiskers mirror, bands and bands globally be a private. Then to us next guy take a tear up. Then to us be a private. Mum say rock poor wa. Mum that be a no, be a no sakal banish no amir. Then it's not just what's
1945, the Allies defeated Hitler. This horrible film footage was shown in the West, a Nazi concentration camp after liberation. But only a few understood what they were actually seeing. The site was being cleared for new inmates. The Soviets did not destroy the Nazi camps. They continued to use them after the war. The agreement which uh, Stalin made with the West affected the whole of Europe for the next 50 years. So although you can say the crimes are of the same order, um, the, the political outcome at the end of the Second World War quite clearly was very different for those two dictatorships. And it was also very different for the people of Western and Eastern Europe. The Kremlin strategically orchestrated ethnic cleansing in the Baltics, so that the Russian settlers became a majority in all the largest Baltic cities. Estonians, Latvians and Lithuanians were loaded onto cattle trucks and deported to Siberia. The tiny Baltic nations were brought to the brink of extinction. Deportations, executions and torture became the post-war reality for millions of people. Concentration camps were scattered throughout both Europe and Siberia. In many of them, horrific medical experiments were performed on humans. In Butugichag camp in Magadan, the KGB used thousands of prisoners as guinea pigs, experimenting with the human brain. Many of these prisoners were still alive during the experiments. All of this happened after Nazism was defeated and memorials made to its victims. The victims of the Soviet death camps were buried in numbered graves. There is no memorial here just a pile of the shoes of murdered victims. Children's shoes among them. Feeling complete impunity, the post-war KGB terrorized the population, letting loose their most beastly instincts. Mesis Gaia Mara un tur pievērāns bija lielā sinspēļķi. Nu, tās asins savācām stikla burkā, jo tā bija mūsu tēvu dzīvība. Man ir grūti stāstīt man tā kā... Man tā kā uzplēst ir jauna rēta un tāda, ka lasi jo. This was drawn by a KGB prison guard who had served for 33 years in the Soviet interior system. He was depicting his routine, everyday life. Who were these men? Who were doing these atrocities? Meet one of them the notorious Janis Zinters. A KGB interrogator in the Soviet-occupied Latvia, he was particularly famous for his brutality towards women. The victims' testimonies paint an horrific picture of his interrogations. Female victims were beaten and tortured by several KGB officers continuously for 20 hours. Not everyone could endure it. The wife of Ernest Waltman, Veronika was beaten and tortured by Zintars and his drunk colleagues for four days. She finally committed suicide by hanging herself in the prison cell.
When the Soviet Union collapsed, Tsintaris fled to Russia. The Kremlin refuses to extradite him, calling him an honorable veteran. With the hands of these KGB veterans, the Soviet Union terrorized and tortured innocent people. They were the ones who guarded death camps, where millions were exterminated and thousands used in horrific medical experiments. Many of these death camp veterans are still alive. Unlike their SS colleagues, they are proud of what they did. They are proud of the Soviet Union, which let them do it. Прежде всего следует признать, и об этом я уже говорил, что крушение Советского Союза было крупнейшей геополитической катастрофой века. Крупнейшей геополитической катастрофой века. Никому не хочется сознавать, что твои как бы предки были преступниками банальными. Я думаю, в этом дело. Under Gorbachev and Yeltsin, the crimes of the Soviet Union were at least not advertised. Under President uh, Putin, we see a very different approach. Uh, the idea that uh, Russia continues, in a sense, uh, in, uh, in the footsteps of the Soviet Union, and any attack on the Soviet Union is an attack on modern Russia. The Russian identity has been shaped up by the sense of, of being